All right, check it out. A Betacam SP. A UVW-1200. This is a commercial model Sony Beta player. This is not a recorder, only a player. Okay, Betamax man, feel free to chime in with your comments, but take a look at this industrial Betamax Beta SP. This was used in the commercial broadcast industry. Look at how this thing is constructed. Let's just take a quick peek around this guy. This isn't like your standard Beta 2, Beta 3 machine that's on the market that you might be able to find on eBay and whatnot. This was dedicated for the commercial broadcast industry. And so the customer brought this in to me saying that it has some kind of an error code on it. I haven't even hooked it up yet. I thought we'd just take a look around this thing before I did anything at all. I've actually got two other ones from the same customer. I think I've got a 1600 and an 1800. Now those do record. If you're not familiar with the beta mechanism, it's a bit different than the VHS and it does a full 180 degree tape wrap in this direction and then it comes back around. Now the early 8mm models did the exact same thing and then Sony realized, hey, you know VHS has these V type loading that just loads on the two halves of the drum. And so the later 8mm models did the same thing as the VHS models and they worked perfectly fine. It wasn't so much monkey motion going on. There's so much happening to do the tape wrap, the U-matic type tape wrap. Anyhow, let's go ahead and give it some power and see what it's going to do. If it's going to power up, if it's going to flash an error code. So just doing my initial checkout, I noticed the drum, the tape is actually stuck to the drum. So let's go ahead and give it some power. Okay, so here's power up. Power on. Welcome to Betacam SP. Error 02603. Alright, so I got the tape out. The tape was physically broken. It loads. When I press play, I get an error 694. And so the error 694 says that neither the supply or the take up reel frequency generators can be detected. So I don't think it's the supply or the take up reel frequency generators. I didn't see the tape move. Let's eject it. And we'll try it again. So no errors at this point. I want to see if I can see the capstan shaft right here rotate when I press play. And I do. But you know what I don't see? I don't see the solenoid pulling in the pinch roller. On these units there's a solenoid that actually engages the pinch roller right here. So let's take the tape out one more time. And this time, I'm going to manually engage the solenoid to engage the pinch roller to the capstan shaft. Tape loaded perfectly. So now, I'm going to go ahead and pull this in and press play. And look at that. It's playing with no fault codes. So now the question, why is the solenoid not pulling in? Because it plays perfectly. I actually have a video monitor connected right now and it has an absolutely excellent picture. Oh look at that, if I let go it works fine. Or when I stop it, it releases. Let's hit play again, see if it engages by itself. 
I wonder does that time. Could it be just a gummed up mechanism down here on the solenoid assembly? Let's see if we can rewind it. Yes. I think it's just a gummed up mechanism because it's working absolutely perfectly now. That is weird. Because when I hit play last time, that solenoid right here did not engage the pinch roller right here. And you can see the pinch roller is turning, or the capstan is turning. It is taking up the tape. The picture quality is absolutely awesome. Unfortunately, Beta always had a better picture than VHS. And especially Beta SP. This is broadcast quality video right here. I really wish Beta would have taken over. The picture quality is just so much better than VHS. Number one, look at the size of the cylinder compared to a VHS cylinder. It's about a third bigger, so that means that the distance the video head travels in the 180 degree rotation range is much, much longer, which means the surface speed of tape to head is much greater. The greater the surface speed, the greater the data rate can be. Okay, so I have the loading ring partially loaded. Or as in the beta industry, they say threaded. They don't load the tape, they thread the tape. This is the pinch roller right here. This is the pinch roller loading arm. And watch this. Now keep in mind that over here on the other side that you can't see, there's a solenoid that presses on the back of this on the top and the bottom to engage this. Ugh, look at that. So I've let go of it. It's slowly moving back. So what has happened is the grease that's in here, the lube, has gone dry. So it's acting like a glue at this point because there actually there actually is a spring underneath this that's supposed to keep this in the retracted position. So that's why it's having trouble loading. If I work this back and forth a few times, I'll bet you it starts working better. So I'm going to have to pull this off and re-lube this bushing that's down in here. But I'm going to introduce some acetone to the situation. I'm going to pull that retaining clip off right here. I'm going to put a couple drops of acetone on that and then work it back and forth and see if we can get the acetone down in the bushing. Okay, so that's the retainer. It's off. Now I'm just going to dip my screwdriver in the acetone and a drop is going to form on the end of it. And when I touch it, you see the drop there. So now I'm going to try to work this back and forth a few times and hopefully the acetone will get down in there. And try to loosen it up just a little bit. I have to try to lift it up very slightly while I'm rotating it. Oh, it's getting much, much easier to move now. Look at that, it's moving on its own. All right, so let's go ahead and take this off of the shaft now. I don't want to take the loading ring completely off of this unit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lift it off the shaft. We'll have to reattach the spring underneath it somehow. That's how it should work right there. That's the problem. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. We'll try to get it all cleaned up. 
then we'll get it back together and see if that solves the problem. Okay, so I have it completely off. I'm going to take some acetone. And I'm just going to go ahead and scrub. I know it's hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and scrub the shaft where this used to live. I'm just trying to get all the old lube off of this down to a bare metal surface once again. So it might be out of focus, but next I've removed most of the cotton from the cotton swab. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this through the bushing. There it's in focus. And so last, I'm just going to place it on here without the spring. And it should drop into place and move absolutely freely like this. So I'm very happy with that. So next I'm going to add just a film of light machine oil to the shaft and the bushing. And then I'll have to try to finagle the spring back onto it somehow. I'm not quite sure how, but I'll make it work one way or the other. So I've got my light machine oil. And also I'm going to put a little droplet in the bushing itself. I'll go ahead and drop that back on. Even without a spring, it tries to move just because of the angle that it's at right now. Okay, so notice I have the heads, which are here and here, about 180 degrees away from where I'm working because I don't want to touch one of the video heads. Okay, well, unfortunately, I couldn't show you attaching this because my hands were totally in the way, but it now springs back just as it should. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick tape path cleaning with some acetone and a cotton swab, and we'll fire this unit up and see if it plays. All right, here we go. Let's put a tape in it. It loads perfectly. Let's hit play. It engages the pinch roller to the capstan shaft and it's playing the tape. Stop. Rewind. Absolutely perfectly. Eject. Totally awesome. Betacam SP repaired. Okay, so a couple of things that are different about Beta. Okay, so take a look at this coil right here. That is the take-up sensor. Now on a VHS machine, it has a infrared photo diode and a detector right here. An infrared photo diode that sits in the middle and the detector sits right here. On a beta machine, let's load the tape into it. So let me hit rewind and you'll actually see a metal leader come out of the tape. Did you see that? Let's try it one more time. That little coil actually senses the metal leader. And there's another one on the supply side. This is the take up side. So here's the supply side down in here. So a beta machine does not use a clear leader like a VHS machine uses. It actually uses a metalized leader. I think it's a very, very thin strip of aluminum, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this tape to the end. And you should see the metal leader come out right there. Then it retracts and it's now rewinding. So there's the tape. Let me hit rewind. You saw the metal leader come out. Do it one more time. So it's actually an aluminized metal leader and that little coil detects the difference between the standard tape that doesn't have any resonance to it and the metalized leader. Let's go ahead and I'll fast forward the tape to the end. We'll take a look at the end as well. 
Okay, so the tape is now rewinding. There it is. So that's the difference between VHS and Beta. A VHS tape has a clear leader and a Beta tape has a metalized leader. Okay, the tape's in it. This is the stop position where they do a freeze frame so they can cue it up and get it ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit play. It's got the time code on it. Even though it's only a crappy consumer camera, look at the quality of the video on here. On a VHS you'd see a lot of noise, especially in the reds, the blues, and the purples over here. Definitely a very good looking picture. That's why Beta actually had a much, much better picture. So I believe this unit, this tape that's in this unit, was used in a DVD duplication facility. This is probably a master tape used. It's got a couple previews on it. You'll see it here in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second. Okay, so here is the title page of what's on this unit. And we'll see the video preview coming up here shortly. All right, there it is, up and playing. So I want to give a sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Now keep in mind, I had to do a splice and it's coming up here in just a second. Because the tape was damaged. There's the splice. Go ahead and leave me a comment, a question, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye. So a little bonus footage. There's the hours meter display on this unit. So T1 is the total number of hours of operation. How long the unit has been on. 58 thousand six hundred and thirty hours so fifty eight sixty three times ten hours drum rotation thirty hours tape running twenty hours and the count of threading is one hundred and sixty times that's it this thing is meant anyhow I thought you'd like to see the hour meter counter that's built into the Sony commercial Beta SP machines. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the bonus footage. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.